From Delhi to New York to Hong Kong, the price of Indian art continues to climb. Indian artists are breaking sales records at international auction houses, while domestic buying is at an all-time high. As the value placed on Indian art grows, Indian artists are exploring new mediums, pressing traditional cultural norms, and popularizing art education in India's colleges and universities. This is the rise of Indian art. The Jahangir Art Gallery in Mumbai is one of an increasing number of galleries dedicated to the sale of Indian modern and contemporary art. Here, artists display their work and talk to potential buyers about their creations. Both domestic and international visitors are welcome to wander through the gallery free of charge. Artists stand by in hopes of making a sale. An artist can wait several years before being allowed exhibition space at Jahangir. Once earned, an exhibit will remain up for only a couple of weeks. A lot of people have started buying. They have started seeing this painting as a form of investment. Earlier that was not a scenario. Since the Indian economy has picked up and since uh, now India is making its presence felt across the globe, more of Indian art is now being acknowledged. International collectors are paying attention. The world's foremost auction houses, such as Christie's and Sotheby's, are allocating more space for Indian art. Indian artist Francis Newton Souza's painting, Birth, sold for $2.5 million at Christie's International in 2008, a record-breaking sale for an Indian artist. I would say that now, when I, we auction a piece of Indian contemporary art, there are as many Europeans as there are Americans, as there are Indian buyers competing for a work. It is incredibly international. Just a decade or two ago, Indian art was primarily purchased within India or by expatriates living abroad. While sales to foreigners have increased, new wealthy Indians, the beneficiaries of a booming economy, are taking art seriously, both for its quality and to support the national identity it symbolizes. I think India as a brand kind of is getting very, it's getting cooler and cooler and probably will get cooler and cooler with time. Icon Gallery in New York City is one of many international galleries serving Indians living abroad. I'm buying, uh, yeah, buying all over the world. I've collected some of the works and I still need to build on that collection. The economy itself has improved and people now have surpluses after, you know, clothing and feeding themselves and putting a roof on their heads. They have resources left to do something with it, like Chinese art, Indian art today has a, a global audience and a, and a global following, that's incredibly encouraging. I just hope Indian art goes up, 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 up. Yet Indian art faces challenges at home and abroad. Many say the Indian government does not provide enough support for the arts. Others say art is still not taken seriously as a profession in India. As India's economy and influence on the world stage rises, so does the value placed on its cultural products. Indian art is no longer limited to traditional paintings. Sculptures, contemporary installations, and abstract modern works are taking hold as India's collectors and artists become increasingly en vogue. We've only seen the tip of the iceberg with what India can do in terms of its art market. It's a country of 1.2 billion people and it's one of the fastest growing economies in the world. I think we have a lot more to see.